to Tennessee. I'm leaving immediately. Chattanooga, here I come. Pardon me, boy. Is that the Chattanooga choo-choo? Right on track 29. Boy, you can give me a shine. I can't afford to board a Chattanooga choo-choo. I've, I've, I've got my fare. And just a trifle to spare. You leave the Pennsylvania station about a quarter to four. Read a magazine and then you're in Baltimore. Dinner in the diner, nothing could be finer than to have your ham and eggs in Carolina. When you hear the whistle blow an egg to the bar, then you know the Tennessee is not very far. Shovel all the coal in, gotta keep it rolling. Woo woo, Chattanooga, there you are. There's gonna be a certain party at the station in in satin and lace. Uh, Tacoma to Livingston, uh -huh. I think. And uh, so they gave me a hundred a day's pay for every hundred miles. Really? So if I ran 900 miles in a day, I got nine days pay for that day. It was like a bonus system or something? Hmm. It's like a bonus for well, performance? Yeah. I mean, that was our, our schedule was uh, we got a, at least, a, if we drove what, 30 miles, we got 100 miles. That's great. Day. That's good. That must Automatically. Be. And you had a per diem, yeah, too, didn't yeah. you, when you were out of town? And so when I went to Portland all the time, and I always got paid a day and a half because it was 147 miles by rail. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, well, no, uh, it was Tacoma to Portland was 147 miles, and Seattle to Portland was 188 miles. Mm -hmm. So I got closer to a double day, but I could get uh, uh, 30 minutes Final initial terminal of the day, making out the train, the time slip, and and uh, reading all the orders in there that I had to follow. Going down there, I got a sheet. You'd get a sheet, uh -huh. maybe four or five sheets of paper, all train orders. Yeah, and you had to look, look go through the train order to make sure that. Uh, they had all the orders for the trains coming the other way, uh -huh. and you had to clear all the, those trains. You had to figure out where you're going to run for them for to get your meals and yeah, everything. Cool, cool. So, so I had to figure out the that was a conductor's job, but the conductor had no idea how much tonnage, how fast I could pull a tonnage or anything. Right, he, he you know was clueless. I mean? So they just left it up to the head end. Yeah, well, you so were we the top to dog. Out where we were going to go eat. And, yeah. And the fireman was the only guy in the crew that could demand to eat. Why is that? Where he wanted to eat. He had to pull over? You stopped to eat. Because he's the guy shoveling, he right? He had to shovel the coal. <laughs> yeah. You got to yeah. keep the coal shoveler happy. That was great. You, isn't that how you started? Oh yeah. Well, when did I you start it out? Yeah. The first, my first trip was I, uh, I could be three hundred and twenty-six miles. I had to make the round trip. My yeah. First trip on a coal shoveling, shoveling coal. From where to where? On a, on a. But it was uh, we only had three cars. Passenger train with three. Yeah. Uh, well, what, did your arms get tired that first uh, couple weeks or what? No. Really? No, but my legs, right up here, the upper part of my legs, uh -huh. going down the track like this, yeah, and just balancing. You had to balance all the time because the tracks go like this. Uh -huh. and you're, you're going it's kind of like this. you're a drunken and sailor or the something. Day, after a day or two, your legs got so darn sore. The upper part of your legs. Yeah. Until you know, you've been working a while, and then they they find it didn't bother you anymore. But you got your training shoveling coal. So you the just observed, telling you what to do. So did the, like the other guys let you, get, you know, run the train while you're a fireman just to give you a little experience? Or oh yeah, most of them did. Yeah. 
and they wanted to get a coffee break, so. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, I mean, a lot of times, he, uh, like I've had, used to have, well, some engineers, as soon as I show up to work, why, they, they think they're going to get a night's sleep. <laughs> you know, a night, and uh, the engineer would sleep, and the brakeman and I would be awake all night, you know. Doing the hard work. Yeah. I yeah. got the habit of never, never dozing off like a lot of them did. Yeah. Train a ride, 16, coaches long. Train a ride, 16, coaches long. Okay, what is this guy holding here? It was a well. They, it was a deal. Well, tip for the orders. Yeah. Here's the orders in the string. I see it. it right yeah. in the middle, and yeah. that's how you caught your orders going sixty miles an hour. What? So this guy put that pole out as the train was going by. Yeah. And and who who got the uh, order? You or? Well, if it was on the engineer's side, the engineer would get them. Yeah. If it was on the fireman's side, the fireman would get them. We didn't get any orders like that. And to pick up the mayor, mayor had it. He had it in the Tacoma papers. Everything. He, the Northern Pacific was going to stop this hot shot train that didn't stop. Yeah. You know, all the way down to San Diego. Yeah. I mean, except the main big cities. And uh, Mayor Stillicum was it? The mayor Stillicum. We had to stop and pick him up. So what happened? Wait, he had a we whole left group him at of Tacoma, people. Or left him at Stillicum. There was a whole group of people out to see. It was like a celebration, yeah. right? Yeah. Where they were going to stop and watch. <laughs> Everybody the come out, and I lean way out the window, waving at everybody. And tell him why, though, the guy didn't have the right color of paper on that string, right? They ran out of the pink paper. Well, yeah. What did they get the wrong message off the uh, the wire thing? I didn't hear a word about it, oh. because somebody goofed. Some of them, they put footboards all the way across. What, what is that? A foot, they call it a cow catcher. A cow catcher, yeah. And then, but they had a little platform there for a uh, brakeman to ride on. And that was the brakeman that rode with the, the train? Brakeman, yeah. Yeah. And uh, so did you ever push any cows or what? <laughs> Did you ever push any cows off the tracks? Oh yeah, we've had to stop for for uh, uh, cattle quite often. Horses. I mean, did you ever push some off with the the that that thing oh, on the no. front of the train? No. Okay. We never did. Well, I've tried it. In fact, I tried to I tried to shove a bear off the track. Really. <laughs> Where was yeah. that? Oh, down around a uh, uh, little out of Olympia, uh -huh. uh, on a, the hill. There's a hill just the other side of Olympia, where you go towards up a good out down toward Montesano, and, uh -huh. and there, yeah. It was right on the tracks, huh? Oh yeah. <laughs> we had to stop every once in a while for for cattle on the track, or uh -huh. or. Uh, animals. So you tried to push him off or the bear? Well, yeah, we, it was, we were good, but he, he stopped and challenged us. <laughs> That's great. He just pawed the ground a little bit, <laughs> lowered his head, and just stood in front of us. Well, that stopped us. <laughs> that stopped you. Yeah. Casey Jones, you better watch your speed. Trouble ahead. And know that notion just crossed my mind. The engine ahead of the caboose. Yeah. And some of them put the engine behind the caboose. And a lot of that times, the reason for it, the caboose had wooden sills. Uh huh. The drawbar back there was hooked up to a chunk of wood. Yeah. You know, uh -huh. and. Uh, uh, with the metal sills, way they could put a lot more pressure on them. Cool. So, I mean, did the 
did, did was that a break room for you guys, the caboose, or what? Yeah, yeah, the break room. Uh, so. Go back there and take a, a break, take a nap. Yeah. Well, a lot of times they just, if they were riding the caboose, they could just uh, pull a pin right above. Here's a coupler. Uh huh. And they got the, it's hooked up. They got a, a chain with a, could pull a pin. Yeah. And uncouple the train. Okay. Just standing on this platform. Oh, cool. And then sometimes going up a hill, and they didn't want to stop the train, and we would come up behind them, uh -huh. and they would just pull a pin back there and open a coupler, uh -huh. and then uh, we would just couple into them while we were still moving on the hill. and Really? To boost them over the hill. What is that again, Roy? What is it's this? A hoop. Yeah? And so what do you do? You have to put your arm out and put a cat go through there with, without stopping. Well, how fast would you be going when you'd be getting those things? Well, it should be about 20 or 30 miles an hour. What? Once in a while, you goof and you don't tell you there's a hoop out. You see a hoop out. Yeah. And you're going there 60 miles an hour. You can't slow down. So sometimes you might, oh, I caught my thumb one time. Wow. Really? Ow. And boy, that was an hour. <laughs> wow. Well, wow. Sometimes it, it, it Get it right in the elbow, you know, oh, wow. in, in here. Oh, you get bruised or what? Feel it. Yeah, I bet. If you had Brakeman, he would could go back and sit in there if he wanted to. Uh -huh. And it had had steam pipe up there, oh, no. so he could keep heat. warm. Great. Yeah. The dog do, dog house. Yeah. It was yeah. like a mini yeah. little break house. room. Yeah. Well, Break room. Okay. A lot of break room would just go back there so they could sleep and nobody would see them. <laughs> <laughs>
Huh. Wow, look at this photo. This is pretty cool. Yeah. This is a brake man there or a switch man? Yeah. Switch man. See, this gets a signal that that track is, track's not lying. Uh-huh. It, it, here's the seat. Here's the train on the main line. Yeah. And it, the engine went into the passing track. Okay. And, and this guy's he's just there to... Was he on the train or? Well, apparently he was on the train, yeah. yeah. And he just threw the switch right back in there. The engine probably got some cars that could come out, uh -huh. hook up to the train and take off. Okay. But, uh, yeah. You have to watch your points all the time. What points? What do you mean? Well, to make sure the switches are lined up. Oh, I see. If somebody ran through them yeah. before, mm -hmm. they're not going to work right. And you may be coming down there and they may be out of line. So would you possibly it's, derail? Oh, well, well, yeah, if you're going, coming the wrong direction. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's kind of scary. But we have had guys run through a switch. Not either. They didn't know about it. Or yeah. Something. Yeah. And just ignore it. But normally <clears throat> you're going to stop and and uh, take care of it so somebody else doesn't. Oh, I've been smiling lately, dreaming about the world at one, and I believe it could be someday it's going to come. Cause out on the edge of darkness, there rides the peace train. Oh, peace train, take this country. Come take me home again yeah, I've been smiling lately Thinking about the good things to come And I believe it could be Something good has begun Oh, peace train sounding louder Light on the peace train Okay, so what, what, is, what kind of train was this? Well, it could be either passenger or freight Okay, what is he holding that? What's that bar there? That's a throttle. That's a throttle? Okay. This this uh, one here is a, a brake for the train. Uh -huh. And then he's got another another brake for just the engine. Okay. And it's a smaller one, but it just sets the engine without setting the train uh -huh. brake. Yeah. And a lot of times you... You just, you could have a break here, and we would take a block of wood and stick it in there so, so those brakes wouldn't apply. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, the block, would, which was illegal to do. Right. But everybody did it, and uh, so it wouldn't accidentally lock those wheels and slide them. Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. that's why you did that. Huh? Yeah. It's kind of like a safety thing. And one of these is your uh, air in the train. And are those dials in there I can't see? Yeah, they're big dials. Okay, and what, what are they, pressure? Well, some of them, uh, one of them could be a speedometer. Okay. We used to have a speedometer up here. Okay. We didn't have it on any freight trains or anything, but we had a... Uh, fancy uh, passenger train, uh, one of the well, most modern, uh, the first Temkin bearing train in the in the world. I hear the train a coming, it's rolling around the bend, and I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when I'm stuck. In wasn't it a great job, Roy? Did you enjoy yeah. being an engineer and working for the trains? It was. It was a good. It was a good job. I mean, I, I uh, uh, really uh, was disappointed when they got the diesels. Why is that? Because it was much more interesting to work on a steam engine. And why do you think it was more interesting to work on a steam engine? Just the romance it's of the. Because on the diesel, you just sat and rolled. Oh, okay. You so didn't you didn't do any, do anything. Right. The firemen, 
He just sat and looked out the window. Oh, so when did the firemen uh, disappear? When the diesels came well, in? Then they finally, they finally got rid of the firemen. Yeah. Then the engineer uh, uh, was well to uh, the conductor was. They took the caboose off too. Huh. And but they put uh, old track signals out there to if something was wrong with the train. Mm -hmm. You got a signal mm -hmm. to stop. Cool. We had what they called Pennsylvania coal. And if we got that coal, boy, we were happy. Why? So why is that? I mean, you could you'd go all the way to Seattle to Portland and not a bit of smoke. Really? Because the coal it, was it better? Burned, it burned so clear. And you didn't have any ash. Wow. You didn't have to shake the fire down or, or anything. Wow. And they were so much easier to fire an engine. Did it burn with, more? With because it burnt so clean. Yeah. clean. So, uh, and you, you didn't have to shake the fire down, out the ash out. Oh, it, it, it just, didn't create it. Wow. And what kind of coal was that it called? It? They called it Pennsylvania coal. And of course it was from Pennsylvania. Yeah. But from I mean, did they ship it out in trains to you guys? or yeah. did you? And the coal we would get here up around Black Mountain or, or up in the hills here. Mm -hmm. I can't even think of the names of them now. But we got our own coal, and there was much dirt in that coal. Really? Half of it, we'd get a tank of coal, and half of it would be dirt. Wow. All dirt and ash. And, and so that darn dirt wouldn't, wouldn't uh, burn, but it sure turned to, uh, would turn to ash and get kind of muddy if it oh, was wet. Wow. So it must it have been a rainy, nightmare to clean you know, out, huh? And it'd be kind of kind of muddy stuff yeah. that you'd... Oh, would you... So would that, like, it would be muddy, so it would probably, the, the other coal wouldn't burn because it was wet in there? Well, that's right. I mean, it made it harder to burn because if you got a burning, a good fire in there, well, then anything burnt. Mm -hmm.